One of the higher yielding dividend growth stocks on the market right now is at a 52 week low and that is Pfizer stock ticker PFE trading at $26.27 per share and it has been diving down over the past year down around 34.18% in year to date down 9%. Now the company has a high starting dividend yield. Look at this sitting at 6.38%. So they are making big dividend payments. And right now, when I look at analyst recommendations here on Seeking Alpha, I'm seeing a lot of people very bullish on the company. So in this video, we'll be analyzing Pfizer stock, looking at some of the recent news, looking at the dividend metrics, and of course, seeing if we can find the intrinsic value to decide if the stock we should consider buying or selling. So let's go ahead and jump into it by jumping over to my stock screen or spreadsheet. We'll come up here, plug in PFE and hit enter. And you can see all this data is going to automatically load in thanks to the help of the ticker data add-on in Google Sheets, which you can get at tickerdata.com at the link in the description. And you can also download any of my spreadsheets at tickerdata.com at the link in the description. But the first thing I want to point out here is look right here, free cash flow per share took quite a nosedive down in 2023. And so it's pretty evident why the share price has declined so much when you look at those metrics there. Now, why is this? Let's dig into this just a little bit. First off, we can see there was quite a decrease in revenue per share in 2023 as well. 2022, revenue per share at $17.89, but 2023, dropped all the way down to $10.37. Now we have to keep in mind, this huge spike up we see here in 2021 and 2022 was due to the COVID vaccine. So revenues were growing slightly before that, but there was a huge jump up in 21 and 2022. And without that in 2023, revenue per share took a pretty big dive down. So obviously that's not gonna help the free cash flow per share and it definitely doesn't help the earnings per share either. But here's also the big problem with Pfizer. If we jump over to the profitability spreadsheet, you can see we already have Pfizer plugged in here. If we look at the 10 year average gross profit ratio for this company, sitting really nice at about 74%. And it looks like from around 2013 all the way to 2020, it stayed pretty close to around that 74% range. But look at this. We saw a drop in 2021 in 2022. Now this drop wasn't too bad. We still saw increases in earnings per share because revenue per share grew so much. But here's where things start to not get bad. If we jump back over to the profitability sheet, we can see in 2023, gross profit ratio of 50.06%. That is drastically lower than the 10 year average for this company. And you can see this charted out here. It's a pretty big difference. So when you combine the fact that they had lower revenue per share and the margins were quite a bit worse, it makes sense why earnings per share and free cash flow per share were so bad for this company. And we'll come back and touch on this just a little bit more here in a moment. But let's go ahead and look at some of the dividend metrics for this company. If we jump over to my dividend breakdown spreadsheet. We'll come up here, plug in PFE and hit enter. Again, you can see all this data will automatically load in thanks to the ticker data add-on. Now, starting dividend yield, sitting at 6.4%, we already touched on this, but they are paying out big dividends. And you can see in 2013, they're paying out around 96 cents per share, but it's jumped up all the way to $1.64 in 2023. And with their most recent dividend hike, $1.68 per share. It's a pretty solid dividend growth for a high yielding company. And the 10 year dividend growth has been decent, it's sitting at about 5%. But it's slowed down a little bit in the past five years, sitting at about 3.4%. Now, with all of that put aside, simply by looking at the spreadsheet, there's a lot of red flags when it comes to Pfizer and their dividend payment. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few of them. Obviously, payout ratio, 436%. That is not good whatsoever. Free cash flow payout ratio, sitting at 192.93%. Now, like we've already touched on, that is because they saw a big drop in EPS and free cash flow in 2023. We do know this. And that's also why we can see the 10 and five year free cash flow is negative. And so when we look at their free cash flow versus dividends paid out, we can see from 2013 to 2020, free cash flow was actually slightly declining year over year. And then we saw the big spike up in 2021 and 2022 with the COVID vaccine. But in 2023, free cash flow was only at 4.8 billion, while they paid out over $9 billion in dividend payments alone. So their free cash flow did not even come close to covering those dividend payments. In fact, dividend payments was almost twice as much as the free cash flow they generated. So we can see historically speaking, that free cash flow payout ratio has been at around the 50% range for this company. And in 2021 and 2022, it was sitting closer to around 30%, a very healthy range, but then it spiked all the way up to 192% in 2023. So obviously long-term, that is not sustainable. The company has to generate more free cash flow than they're paying out in dividends, and we definitely won't see high levels of dividend growth moving forward if this doesn't change. So obviously this company does focus quite a bit on using their free cash flow per share to pay out dividends, but how else have they been using their free cash flow over the past year? Well, just a few months ago, Pfizer announced they're investing $43 billion to battle cancer, and what they're saying is they're going to acquire Seagen for 229 per Seagen share in cash for a total enterprise value of approximately $43 billion. So this is a pretty big move for the company, and they're hoping it's going to position them as a leading company in on 
oncology, and the oncology industry is considered pretty profitable by most people. And as I was reading Pfizer's latest earnings report, we can see they stated completing the acquisition of Seijin doubled their oncology research and resources overnight. So this was a pretty big move by the company. And like the management team stated, this doubled Pfizer's oncology pipeline with over 60 different programs. Now, when we talk about companies like Pfizer or Johnson & Johnson, Pipeline is always the key word. These companies have to heavily invest into research and development to continue growing their pipeline, to continue growing their revenues. So whenever you're analyzing these companies, it is important to look at the pipeline. And we can see Pfizer's pipeline snapshot right here. They currently have 41 projects in phase one, 34 in phase two, 31 in phase three, and six at the registration level. Now this pipeline snapshot is as of January 30th, 2024. So this is after the acquisition. If we look where they're at in October 31st of 2023, three, they were only at 83 total, so this acquisition from Seijin was a pretty big one. It added quite a bit to their pipeline. If we keep moving forward and look at Pfizer's 2024 key priorities, we can see there's quite a bit for them to focus on. One we just touched on, which is achieve world-class oncology leadership. It's obvious based on the moves they have recently made, this is something they're taking pretty seriously. They want to deliver next wave pipeline innovation. I think this kind of goes along with the oncology leadership. Maximize performance of their new products. Expand margins by realigning our cost base. This is obviously a big one and like we just pointed out margins in 2023 for the company not good quite a bit below the historical average so it's no surprise they're talking about that and then lastly they want to allocate capital to enhance shareholder value and this is something we'll talk about here in just a moment but if you go ahead and scroll down to the seventh page we can see here one in three people will be diagnosed with cancer in their lifetime. This is why the company is bullish on their oncology program. Oncology represents one of the largest and fastest growing therapeutic areas. So again, obvious why Pfizer is focusing on this area. Now, if we go ahead and scroll down all the way to the 14th slide, we can see where they talk about capital allocation. And I love when a company talks about this because it lets me know how I'm going to be rewarded as a shareholder. Now, a company like Pfizer has to heavily invest into research and development. Companies like Johnson & Johnson have to do this as well to continue to expand expand their pipeline and we can see fiscal year 2023 they invested 10.7 billion in internal research and development so that's a pretty big expense for the company but obviously something they have to do to continue growing we can see paying out dividends they returned 9.2 billion in dividends to shareholders and then here we can see they have share repurchases listed now share repurchases they're saying is going to be a focus moving forward but you have to read the little notes if you see here the little one shows right here that no share repurchases were completed in 2023 current financial guidance does not anticipate any share repurchases in 2024 so that's pretty big information if you're considering buying into this company no share repurchases are planned in 2024 as of right now but it is in the company's long-term plan so Pfizer's clearly struggled a little bit in 2023 with declining earnings declining free cash flow and the dividend metrics don't look good aside from the high starting dividend yield so the question we have to ask ourselves is can they recover and are they trading at a good value at $26.27 very close to their 52 week low of around $25.23 to answer that, let's go ahead and jump into my valuation spreadsheets. Again, you can download these on ticker data, but let's go ahead and plug in PFE and hit enter. And again, all this data will automatically load in. Now the beta for Pfizer is only sitting at 0.57, so a very low beta, so you shouldn't see a lot of volatility with this company. Now the first valuation we're going to look at is going to be Graham's valuation. We'll go ahead and zoom in and we can see the formula Benjamin Graham lays out for us right here. Now the estimated earnings per share average projection we're going with is going to be about 215 for Pfizer. It's pretty close to analyst projections, seeking alpha projections, and then we're applying a growth rate of five. But then we have to divide all this by Y, which is the current yield on AAA corporate bonds. And at the time of this video, it's sitting pretty high compared to where its historic average has been over the past 10 years at about 5.34, which will drive down this valuation quite a bit. And this gives us an intrinsic value of about $21.26 per share, still a little bit lower than that current trading price. Now, the next valuation we typically look at is our discounted cash flow analysis. But here's the problem I currently have with this valuation. If we jump back over to our stock screener tab and look at the free cash flow per share, we can see this actually jumps around quite a bit and it makes it a little bit unpredictable to project future free cash flow growth for the company. So ideally with my investments, I can see predictable free cash flow growth and it makes it much easier to perform a discounted cash flow analysis. But in this case, it may make more sense to actually use what's known as a reverse discounted cash flow analysis for Pfizer. And this will tell us how much growth is priced into their free cash flow. Now I've already done this. If I plug in 16 right here, you can see we get pretty close to the current price, but obviously 16% free cash flow growth rate projection 
is not realistic for this company. So why is there this much growth currently priced in? So likely what is happening is the market is telling us that free cash flow will get close to its pre-pandemic levels of around 10 billion. We can see around 10 billion in 2019, 11 billion in 2020. So we can manually adjust this to 2024 to 10 billion just for projection purposes. So now we can see with 16% free cash flow growth rate, it'd give us an intrinsic value of $57. So clearly we're off now. If we bump this down now to around 6%, that's a much more reasonable free cash flow growth rate projection for Pfizer, and it puts us very close to the current trading price. So what I would personally argue is the market is pricing in free cash flow close to around the pre-pandemic levels and then a growth rate of around 6% moving forward. Now, if we jump back over to our other valuations, the last one I want to run this through is going to be our dividend discount model. And again, this values a company based on how much they pay out in dividends and how much that dividend is growing over time. And you can see in this scenario, we're going with a dividend growth rate of 2.75% and a discount rate of around 8%. That gives us a dividend discount model price per share of $32.88 a little bit above that current trading price. So when we jump over to our output tab, we can see the two different valuations we use in the scenario, grams at 2126, dividend discount model at 3288. That gives us an intrinsic value of $27.07, which is only around 3% off from the current trading price. Now, the question we also need to ask ourselves with our reverse discounted cash flow analysis is, is a free cash flow growth rate projection of around 6% realistic? If we think it's going to be higher, then this company may be undervalued. And if we think it's going to be lower, then we could argue the company is currently overvalued. So again, this is something to keep in mind when looking at our valuations. But with a 10% margin of safety, based on these two valuations, our acceptable buy price would be around $24.30 six cents per share meaning it's not quite in our buy range and, and in my honest opinion it looks like this company is trading pretty close to fair value so personally i think there's still a lot of uncertainty with this company I think moving forward, it will be interesting to see how important their acquisition of Seijin was and how profitable their oncology pipeline will prove to be. As for me, I'm not quite as bullish on this company as a lot of people are, and in fact, I'm pretty much staying away from this company. The starting dividend yield is obviously very nice at 6.4%, but it's currently not sustainable with the free cash flow they're generating. I need to see more consistent and stable free cash flow growth for me to consider this company as a potential investment. So with all that being said, go ahead and let me know in the comments down below what you personally think of Pfizer stock, if you think it's a buy or a sell. And like always, if you'd like to be able to download any of my spreadsheets and also get access to the ticker data add-on in Google Sheets, then you can head over to tickerdata.com at the link in the description. So with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.